What's going on, Buzz Bait? Uh, back over here in Mobile Bay. Trying to catch some blue crabs. I guess we've been uh, blue crabbing, I guess, for about four days straight in a row. Yes, sir, and it's been a hot one out here, y'all, in Mobile Bay. But I tell you what, the first thing we're going to do on today's adventure, we're going to go over here, we're going to catch some more crab bait. Then we're going to run our crab traps. Then we're going to pull our crab traps out of the water so we can relocate them. So why have we got to pull our traps out of the water there, Captain? Well, I tell you what, from what we've heard and what we see, there's a tropical storm, Isaac, that is scheduled to hit the Gulf by Monday. So that means we gotta we gotta get our traps because you know if not you know you don't want to have your traps sitting out here uh, in Mobile Bay with a daggum uh, uh, a tropical depression, tropical storm, a uh, possible hurricane. No, sir, that 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 is not wouldn't be a good thing. Uh, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna pull these traps. We're gonna uh, hopefully you know have us another good batch of crabs. And we're just gonna go ahead and pull them out and we're gonna make sure that storm does not catch us by the tail. So y'all stay tuned, right here on WJTC. Every Saturday morning, seven o'clock, fishing time, hosted by Team Larty. We hope y'all enjoy the show. So we're trying to catch some more bait for today. So what are we looking for here, Buzz Bait? Well, what you wanna do to find this bait is you gotta keep your eyes on the pelicans and the seagulls. When you start seeing birds diving down into the water, that is where the bait is. They are, they are locating the bait. Now we see some birds working. Uh, the, the big birds seem to be uh, hanging tight, uh, but we do have some seagulls running around. Yeah, uh, you know, it's right here. I guess it's going on about 12 o'clock, maybe 11.30. You gotta keep your eyes on these birds. Yeah, what you're doing is you're looking for breaks on the water, you, you know, you're looking for birds diving, and then uh, once you see that, that's when you wanna pull your cast net out and give her a test. Well, right now, the water is awfully smooth. You, you would think, seem to think that we would see something breaking, but we just got here. Uh, but what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to locate the bait fish so we can round them up. Yeah, Grandpa, Paul, I just saw a few dolphins swimming. Uh, the other day, we was in here doing our crabbing, and lo and behold, the dolphins was right up in here with us. And I tell you what, they made such a commotion. I told Grandpa I didn't know what it was, but then finally I saw what it was, and they was in there herding up the crab bait just just like Team Lord Well, we was working together that day, weren't we? We sure was. It was like they was in there with us, and we was just having a good old time. We had them stirred up, that's for sure. I mean, we had them fish running from side to side while the flippers over there on the other side working, the buzz bait crab claw on the other side working. That's right. So like crab claw said, you know, you start seeing action, you start seeing birds diving, you see a lot of dolphins in, you know, chasing bait, and you know the bait's there, and then all you got to do is just herd them up, get your net in there on them, and get ready to fill the box up. Yeah, it takes patience now. I mean, a lot of times, uh, you know, we might come out here and spend an hour, you know, hour to two hours just trying to find bait. You know, it's not something you can force. It's just something that happens when it happens. Correct on that. And you got to put yourself in position, and you want to be there in the right place at the right time. That is it. You know, just like anything else, the hardest part is getting there. Once you're there, your chances increase tremendously. <laughs> say, to say the least, huh, Captain? That's right. <laughs> Yeah, but we're just kind of cruising through here. Like I said, you know, and it's always good to have some polarized sunglasses. Polarized sunglasses knocks that glare off the water, and you can you can see fish a lot easier with polarized sunglasses. As you can notice, when you are running an outboard motor, it is the law to have a kill switch. The kill switch is designed so if I fall out, it will pull the switch and it will kill the motor. Always keep that in mind. Anybody that's operating the wheel of an outboard motor has to have a kill switch so wrapped around them, either on your arm like this, which is convenient, or you can tie it up to your belt. You can tie it to your belt. You just need it on your body in case something was to happen and you had to kill the motor. Because yeah, I mean, it had its design. You know, if Cap were to fall overboard, 
you know, it kills the motor, you know, and, and that, that's a part of safety. That's a safety device uh, that is not, not only highly recommended, but uh, like Buzzbait was saying, it's the law. And then uh, the tip of the day uh, is where you kill switch. Uh, you'll uh, avoid uh, trouble with the law and, and you'll have a, a much safer day. There you go. I had a buddy of mine not too long ago. Uh, he was re retired from the Marine Resource Division and he told me that, he said 80% of tickets is because you're not wearing a kill switch. So the tip of the day, once again, wear your kill switch. Looking for that big blue Always grab that O-ring. Grab this O-ring. Black O-ring. That's what shakes some fish out of there. School of Mullins. I guess we've been trolling and drifting through here and finally seen a big break in the action. Seen some porpoises working on some pot of mullet. No buzz bait surplus on in there. And round us up a few mullet on the first cast today. There again, let's give y'all another quick demonstration on my technique on throwing the gas here. Like I said, you've always got that ring in the middle. You want to feed it through. Put your arm. Always keeping your line table free. And you always like a little rattle in the box. Grab about 45. Make sure you nips. That little keep right there. Everywhere buzz bait. Yeah, they're all over. I know we we, we snagged us up. Man, we're right on top of them. You got another loop on them? I see some white flash. Yeah, well, that's what we've been averaging with these small nets, about three to seven fish. You know, you're not gonna you know kill them on such a small net. But a small net can round them up though. I mean that's a bigger size mullet there.
Boy, look at the size of that. Oh. Man, my, my buzz bug, you done uh, outdid yourself today there, Captain. Uh, I think that is the lunker catch of the day for sure. What y'all think? Woo! That was a good little toss right there. I didn't think there was a whole lot to it, but by gosh, look what it produced. You know, sometimes, you know, he didn't throw a perfect pancake. He kind of had a little uh, little horseshoe throw in there, and, uh, and she fanned out on the bottom side. Uh, but you know what? I mean, whew, bus bait done got him a sack full of daggum bait fish. Got a speck. Oh, no, big, big bite Yeah, track. we got to throw him back. Woo! Okay, y'all. Tell you what, uh, that is the big catch of the day, no doubt. <laughs> that might... <laughs> Woo! <laughs> hey, uh... Let me tell y'all. We, we hit the jackpot. Yeah, we hit the jackpot. See, all you want to do is get about, uh, ideally, you want about six or seven of them tosses. Uh, you want to freeze that bait, and then uh, and you'll have plenty of bait for crab bait, fish bait. But it seems like uh, the fish are doing pretty good after the oil spill. You know what I'm saying? I mean, oh yeah, the fish look healthy. Uh, bait fish seems to be uh, all over the place. Yeah. We have got a. Uh, We've got uh, a white trout. I tell you what, white trout. Uh, that's good bait too, man. It sure is. I mean, I'm about to say that's about 40 of them. 40, maybe 50. Well, that's a good thing. I mean, we've been chasing bait all day long, and uh, and what you'd like to do is have uh, about six or eight of those. You know, it's been kind of slow catching. I mean, but we've been working hard. I mean, we got crab bait for the next run, uh, and then we got a uh, fishing bait as well. You know, all you have to do is, uh, you know, you freeze those daggum pogey baits up. I'm just going to tell you, uh, frozen, dead, or live, that is a deadly bait, no doubt. No doubt about it. Look at here. It's just as simple as this. You just grab your line, about three foot, and you just keep rolling it up, just like that. Not a whole lot to it, but it does take practice. Yeah. Get it like that. I mean, you've been throwing a cash net uh, for what? I mean, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. Uh. Well, I've actually been actually growing one about two years now. As far as producing fish. That's right. I've been around them. I've watched crab claw, and I've watched stone crab, and I've watched CJ grow cast nets for years. So, you know, they have their technique, and then I picked up my own little technique, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's producing. Uh, you know, I have a lot of improvement to do, but uh, this is really the only way to get that improvement going is to come out here and actually do it. I totally agree. Uh, you know, uh, you can catch a lot of bait, save yourself a lot of money. Uh, casting is an investment. Uh, it is a lot of fun. Uh, and like I said, uh, that's what you that's the end result right there you know which is some killer bait killer bait